we are Mr. and Mrs. Vegan. And we're here to talk about one of the most confusing topics ever, and that is calories. What do calories describe? I guess the amount of something? Okay, so here's where the confusion breaks down. When you say there's a bunch of calories in something, it's like saying there's a bunch of weather outside. I mean, you don't know what kind of weather that is. It's cloudy, it's rainy, it's a tornado, it's a hurricane. All that different weather has different impact on the environment. Just like all the different types of calories have a different impact on your body. What's most important here are not calories, but... Molecules! What are molecules? Well, they're combinations of elements and they make up things like fat, carbohydrate, and protein. So let's put a molecule on the screen here, Chris, and let's get some room here. Why don't you bring down a molecule of fat? And now I like spin it around for everybody. Can you spin it? Uh, how about like this, like this, like spin it like this, like a ball. All right, now let's stop that one. All right, now let's pull down a molecule of carbohydrate and a molecule of protein. All right, these are three very different molecules. They're made up of some similar elements. What do you see here? Well, I see oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur. But how could these three differently configured molecules have the same effect on the body? They don't. You know, the first guy to study calories was this guy named Atwater, and he ran around feeding people bananas and lighting bananas on fire and lighting their poop on fire, trying to figure out just how much energy was in it. <gasps> so what was he measuring? You know, he was measuring heat. He was measuring the oxidative potential, the potential energy of all these different foods. You know, and he came up with it. Uh, carbohydrate has four calories per gram. Protein has four calories per gram. And fat has nine calories, right? There you go. And alcohol has seven and fiber has about two. These days you measure calories in a bomb calorimeter. It's this machine right here. They put it in, fire it up. That tells you the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a certain amount of water one degree Celsius. Hold on, so are you saying they take my sweet potato and they put it in a chamber and they burn the sweet potato and then that'll tell you how many calories are in it? Yeah, basically. So that doesn't really apply to what's going on in the human body because we process all these different molecules differently. Forget calories, we want to talk about molecules here because that's what's important. So storage potential of fat. Do you know if you ate fat, how much fat could you store on your body? Well, I think almost an infinite amount, right? What do you think the largest person is? About a thousand pounds. You can store a thousand pounds of fat. Oh, that's a lot. How much protein do you think you can store on your body? Oh, I don't think a lot, right? If we could store protein on our bodies, we would all be Hulk. <laughs> doesn't work that way. You don't store protein as protein. How about carbohydrates? Hold on. I know that you can store about two pounds of glycogen. But that stores in your muscles and in your liver. Once you tap out on glycogen, it doesn't convert to fat like most people would like you to believe. There's de novo lipogenesis studies showing the conversion rate, and it's absolutely awful. So that's an important thing we need to talk about here. So we talked about storage potential. Now we're going to talk about conversion. Carbohydrates, to fat. Actually, in this de novo lipogenesis study, it showed that you actually burn more fat than you can create from carbohydrates. Whoa! So are you saying when I eat that huge bowl of oatmeal, I'm actually burning all the fat in the oatmeal before I could actually... You are! That's why people who oh. eat oats don't get fat, despite there being fat in them. <laughs> I eat a lot of oats. How about converting fat to sugar? What do you think the potential in a human body is for that? Oh, I don't think it's very efficient. It's actually impossible to convert fat to sugar. Only plants do that. Protein can convert to sugar. It's called gluconeogenesis. It's another fancy term. And these people on these Atkins diets actually digest their inner skeletal muscles to run their brain. There's many cells in your body that only function on sugar. And if you're not eating your carbs, you're going to have to get them by digesting your muscles, including your heart muscle. And you don't want to do that because it takes a really long time for that to regenerate. Oh, is that why they always complain of an aching back? That's right. They digested all their muscles supporting oh, their spine. That's terrible. So what's this called again? Gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis. All right. Now how about how much energy you get from these three different fuel sources? So when you convert a fat, you get 138 ATP. ATP is your cell's currency for energy. It's when you digest something, when you oxidize something, you're able to transfer that energy all throughout your body. An important thing to understand is 
energy and heat are not weight. Weight comes from these atoms. It comes from the carbon. It comes from the hydrogen and oxygen. When you lose weight, you're actually exhaling carbon dioxide. Remember, our three elements here. Look at the carbon. Look at the oxygen. Look at the hydrogen. That's where the weight's from. It's not from the heat. It's not from the energy. So you're not actually burning the fat at all. You're exhaling the fat? Yep. You're breaking it down into carbon dioxide and water, where you urinate, you sweat it out, and you also eliminate. So you're saying, if I breathe out right now, I just burnt fat? That's possible. It depends on how many carbohydrates you have. That's where people get kind of confused. If you're fully fueled on carbohydrates, if we pull up the carbohydrate molecule here and compare it to the fat molecule, there's so much more oxygen. It actually takes less breath less effort to use carbohydrates. That's our preferential fuel. From these different molecules of fat, protein, and carbohydrate, there's actually different energy potentials. So we're gonna do a little game here, and it's called Calorie Island. What? Are you ready to go to Calorie Island? Yeah, I hope it's, there's a lot of calories there. It's in the South Pacific. <laughs> it's gonna be a vacation, you ready? I'm ready. All right, you're not going alone either. And we're gonna clone you times two. Oh, hello. So Kristen now has two identical sisters, <laughs> so they're triplets. But thankfully at the end of this, I won't have to put up with all three of them because two of them are gonna die. Oh. Yeah, we're putting you terrible on- Terrible story. Yeah, we're putting you on a deserted island and we're leaving the three of you with three buckets of food. So here we go, bucket one, 50,000 calories of protein. Bucket two, 50,000 calories of carbs. Bucket three, 50,000 calories of fat. So here's how the game works. I'm gonna take these buckets away after 24 hours. I'm gonna leave the island and I'm gonna come back in a couple weeks and only pick up who's left alive. Oh. So which bucket should you eat out of? Oh gosh. I guess I'll have to take the fat. It's gonna last the longest. Oh no. <laughs> so Bye the other guys. two Kristen's died. I'm back to take the only survivor <laughs> left and that's the one that ate the fat. That's because the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And you can, with complete efficiency, store about 95% of that bucket of fat. But why would you eat molecules of fat if you want them off your body? It makes no sense. Calories don't tell the whole story. The molecules and elements and the chemical reactions underneath these calories, just like if it's a tornado, a drought, or a thunderstorm, tell completely different stories about the weather. I hope everyone understands it's the molecules that are important here. Flush those calories down the drain. Which molecules do you want to wear around? Not the fat ones. No, nope. keep those out of your diet. What should they eat, Kristen? Carb molecules, tons of them. How is the best way to get these carb molecules? Through whole starch, low fat. If you need any help with eating, check out our prior videos on weight loss, what we eat in a day, and learn how humans are supposed to eat that's whole plants, lightly processed. Without any added fat. Of course, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe down at the bottom. We'll see you soon, guys. Woo! I'm just going with the gut. Never had a doubt, felt like this is just a must. For me in perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us. Now